Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. It's been a while since I posted my last video. I know that last week I didn't post anything, but those of you who are following the uh, those of you who are following me on social media will know that my computer totally busted and I was completely unable to edit or upload videos for you. So I had a bit of a week off. Well, it wasn't really a week off. It was me on the phone to Apple trying to get everything fixed because <laughs> of course the Apple stores are closed because of everything that's going on. Anyway, that is a story for another time. Today, what I wanted to talk about was what is a good source? So when we're doing our family history and it's so important to write down our sources and we all know this because we've talked about it before. Um, but what is like a good source and what isn't? And of course, it's always important to write your source no matter what, whether it's good, bad or anywhere in the middle. <laughs> Today, I thought I would just look at a few different types of sources and just discuss whether they are a good or a bad or somewhere in between kind of source. Before we get to it, if you haven't already hit the subscribe button, please do so because it really helps out my channel and ring the notification bell so that it lets you know when I upload. Okay, so let's get into it. The first source that I wanted to look at was Ancestry Hints. So Ancestry Hints are not a particularly great source. I know that they are so tempting because they pop up and they let us know about a new record or another person doing a family tree or something going on and you just feel so tempted to add it. But in and of itself, an ancestry hint is meaningless. <laughs> so just because the hint is there does not mean that you should take it. And also it can be a mistake to sort of take it and think, well, I'll just sort of check it down the track because half the time you forget to do that and it just becomes part of your family tree and the mistake just gets forgotten. So I'm also not completely saying that they're wrong. Obviously some of the time they're going to be right, but they should be taken with caution. So if you see one of those little leaves pop up and Sorry, there is dust like floating right in front of the camera. I don't know if you can see that. Um, yeah, but where was I? Each hint just kind of has to be taken into consideration. So you see something pop up and you're curious about it, go and have a look at it. Go and compare it to everything else that you already know. Make sure that it fits in with the story you have so far. And if you can disprove it, just completely get rid of it. If, if it doesn't fit with your, you know, if it's just completely off the planet, make sure you get rid of it. So sometimes it might be, you know, a completely wrong country or a completely wrong year, like, you know, years after they died or something like that. So some hints can actually be gotten rid of really quickly. Um, like, for example, I often see ones where it'll be a census record, but the census will be in a completely different country. And I'll know 100% that they were not in that country at that time. So I always get rid of those hints, but I think a lot of people just go ahead and click yes and just take everything. You can see that because if you go into some people's trees, they'll have people, you know, in a census here and then a census there. And you'd think these people traveled the world like all the time, but they, you know, <laughs> if you were just a farmer or something, you sure weren't traveling the world. <laughs> um, so yeah, take ancestry hints with a grain of salt. Make sure that you look into them because sometimes they'll be a gem that you'll want to keep but don't just add them. Ancestry hints are not a source in and of themselves. All right, number two, an ancestry tree. This isn't really too far off from an ancestry hint, except that it's put together by another user rather than just by ancestry's algorithm. So an ancestry family tree made by somebody else is definitely worth looking at because sometimes you'll come across somebody who just knows a lot about that family and it's worth checking their tree. But You'll also come across people who have no idea what they're talking about and who might have put together things with just vague hints or they might have done some guesswork or some of their own research that can be incorrect. So look at those family trees with as much suspicion as you look any ancestry hint. Have a look at it, see how it fits with your picture, see how well researched their tree is, do they have good sources? And if not, you're probably best to just steer away from them. But in and of itself, it is also not a source. So don't use it to back up anything in your own tree. It's not evidence, it doesn't prove anything. It's just somebody else's idea, it's not fact. <laughs> 
My third one is family lore. So family lore, I'm just talking about the stories that have been passed around your family, maybe passed down, and they might come out at your odd family get together where somebody talks about how great uncle whoever did this or we've descended from this famous person or whatever it may be. So family lore can be a really helpful thing, but it can also be kind of a really harmful thing. So absolutely don't ignore those stories. Do write them down, do look into them, but you'll want to probably find something else to back it up. So if you're putting together some research and you want to cite somebody else in your family as the source, do it because, you know, <laughs> because it's better to write down where your idea came from rather than not. But make sure that you also look for some more evidence. So if you're saying, I don't know, my great grandmother had 10 siblings. And I might say my source for this is my grandmother. She told me that she had nine aunts and uncles and, you know, she just remembers it. That's great. Her memory is probably great. And I should write down that grandma told me this is how many siblings her mother had. However, then we can go to the records and have a look and see what we can compare. But family lore is a good source. You should write it down and you should definitely take note of it. But it's also not rock hard proof or evidence. So you kind of, bit of both. Do cite it, don't take it as gospel. <laughs> Grand Uncle Herbie, he invented the umbrella. Birth, death and marriage records, yes. These are amazing sources. You should totally take note of those ones. <laughs> so birth, death and marriage records, they're official. They're gonna be probably the best kind of records that you can get. So definitely cite them in your materials for any important dates or names or anything like that. Anything you've written down that is backed up by a birth, death or marriage record or any kind of vital record, include it. Um, of course, they're not perfect. Not, they're not an absolute guarantee all the time. So for example, I have an ancestor who on their marriage certificate claimed that they were a widow and in fact, uh, and in fact, he was already married. So clearly sort of, he was seeking to have another marriage and you know, you couldn't just marry two people. If you were still married, there wasn't such thing as divorce back then at least amongst the Catholic, um, <laughs> at least amongst Catholics in South Australia. So, you know, the marriage record is a great record. It's not perfect because he said he was a widow, which was a bit of a fib. Actually, it was a complete lie, <laughs> but it's still a fantastic resource. So I would use everything on that record, but of course, always view everything with um, a critical lens, just in case there was any reason to make up a, a story or someone could have just gotten some facts wrong. Like sometimes in death certificates, the informant may have given some wrong information and that's not because they're even doing it on purpose. Sometimes it's just they didn't know. So the informant might be a son-in-law or something like that who maybe didn't know all of the details and maybe made a few mistakes. So 100% birth, death and marriage records are great sources. Just remember to apply your critical thinking skills if anything seems a bit off. All right, a birth, death and marriage transcript. So just like a birth, death or marriage record, a transcript is almost as good. So it's gonna include all the same details and it's almost as official. So just, it's not an absolute official document, but if the person who's transcribing it has done their job correctly, it's just as good. So make sure that you use a reputable transcription agent. Um, also beware because sometimes people can omit information that they think may be upsetting or offensive. So once again, make sure that whoever's doing the transcribing includes every detail that should be on the certificate and then you're good to go. It's just as good of a record. And just make sure that you cite your transcript and where it came from and you're all good to go. <laughs> An online tree. So wiki trees or those 
genie trees or I don't know how you pronounce that <laughs> um, there are a lot of them online and sometimes when you're just searching online you'll come across these trees they are just about the same as ancestry trees take them with a grain of salt do look into them if you're looking for sort of really out there hints but don't take them as gospel don't bother um, putting any of their stuff into your tree if you can't back it up if you don't have any other sources and if they've cited other sources go and look at their sources just to make sure just to make sure that they've interpreted correctly um so yeah so sometimes they are good just for getting those crazy out there hints that you just never would have thought of but you do have to absolutely comb through them and make sure where they got their knowledge from what evidence they have because yeah they're just as bad as ancestry trees in that way they could have put anything up there and just remember the internet is full of garbage <laughs> Just make sure that they know what they're talking about before you add their information into your research. But then if you do, make sure you cite where you got it from, even if it's a crazy um, wiki tree or something. <laughs> Google. Google. Google's not a source. So if you <laughs> go looking for something and you get the answer from Google, don't cite your source as Google. Like. I mean, you should cite it if you're going to put it in there, definitely cite it, but at the same time, it's not a good one. <laughs> it's not a good source. A letter or a diary. So these are actually fantastic sources if you have something like this. This is like a first hand, what do you call it? This is primary evidence. So this is the best kind of evidence you can get. Of course, it's going to be colored by people's sort of perspectives and opinions and things like that. but. It is as good of a resource as you're going to get so make sure that you cite letters or diaries or whatever it is in your research and always say where you got something from and also make sure when you're reading those documents that you remember who this person was that wrote it when they lived all those sorts of things about them so that you can try to actually interpret it as well Records from archives, yes, they are a fantastic source. Once again, just like your, um, just like birth, death, and marriage records, they're another official kind of document, which is great. Um, the only thing, once again, to be aware of is if there's any mistakes in it. Just like birth, death, and marriage records, any of these records can contain errors. So definitely cite them, definitely use them, but also definitely make sure that you read them with a careful eye. So, for example. Um, National Archives here has a lot of military records and you know military records are often fantastic but sometimes for example people lied about their age to get into the military so although it's a fantastic source it's not always the whole story but yes it's fantastic use it and lastly a book so if you read something in a book is that evidence or not it's definitely something that you should cite it's definitely a source you should write down and I think you can cite books yes but you should also always remember that books can have errors and you've also got to remember who wrote them and why they were writing it and things like that so so for example if you read a book that has some genealogy in it about some of your ancestors and it says hey this person's parents were these people and these people's parents were these people or something um, it's not necessarily evidence because it's going to depend on where they got that knowledge from so you might want to look into their sources um, if it's a very old book that's going to obviously be a bit harder so use them definitely cite them definitely say where you got your information from but books like anything are fallible they're written by humans Sometimes people were mistaken, sometimes people remember things wrong, and sometimes people misinterpret information. But yes, a book is a good source, just don't assume everything in them to necessarily be true. Okay, that's about it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope that you found it useful. You should definitely write down your sources no matter what, whether they're a good source or a bad source. But also try to apply your critical thinking skills, especially with the bad sources, but also with the good sources, just in case. Bad sources can sometimes actually have correct information and good sources can sometimes actually have incorrect information. So always use your critical thinking skills and always compare what you're learning to your previous research and see how it fits in. 
If you have any questions or comments, please put them down in the comment section below. And also, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe because it really helps out my channel if you do. I hope that you're having a good one and happy researching. Bye.